Madam Web continues to set anti-records. In 12 days of release, the film barely crawled to $77 million. To give you a sense of the situation's irony, this superhero movie still hasn't reached the first weekend earnings of Morbius, which were $83 million. Now that's a real shift in hierarchy. There's been a dubious rumor that planned reshoots for Kraven the Hunter aim to soften the film, removing bloody scenes to secure a PG-13 rating. Apparently, studio executives are so afraid of a box office bomb that they're hoping to attract kids, at least. Personally, we're skeptical about this, since the adult rating was initially used as a selling point, making the film appealing to a broader audience. If the studio really goes through with this, it could further tarnish its already damaged reputation. In this episode, we'll dive deeper into what to expect from the box office failures of the Spider-Verse films. We'll discuss when we might see a live-action Miles Morales and share the latest updates on the much-anticipated Marvel Zombies adaptation. But before we get back into Spider news, there's word that the shooting for Thunderbolts has already started. Insiders have revealed some intriguing plot details. Firstly, it's confirmed that Florence Pugh's Yelena Belova will take the reins of leadership, mirroring Steve Roger's role. She's even said to name the squad after her favorite Shieldhood football team. Unfortunately, for many fans, Sergeant Barnes's role is significantly reduced. Trusted geek insiders Daniel Richtman and Charles Murphy claim that the film's initial concept has drastically changed. Initially, Kevin Feige was confident that the former Winter Soldier would lead the Thunderbolts, but now the character's role seems much less significant. With each update, we grow increasingly concerned not for the character's fate in the MCU, but because giving the former assassin a chance to lead a group of morally ambiguous misfits could perfectly continue his redemption arc. We can only hope his cameo doesn't reduce him to a mere plot device for stronger, independent characters, which seems increasingly likely. Insiders also ranked the importance of characters in the storyline Yelena Belova tops the list, followed by Nick Fury in a skirt, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Third is The Watcher, followed by Taskmaster and Ghost, with John Walker and Bucky Barnes, aka The Red Guardian, rounding out the list. Fans speculate that Sergeant Barnes might meet a fate similar to Loki's in Infinity War, a significant early appearance, followed by a tragic death at the hands of the main villain, setting the stage for Yelena and Valentina to assemble their own squad of anti-heroes. However, it's too early to draw any conclusions, so we await more reliable insider information and actual footage from the set. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Switching back to Spider News, amid the failure of Madame Web, geek sources have shared that Sony Pictures plans to radically change its content release strategy, focusing heavily on developing animated projects. This doesn't surprise us, given that Into the Spider-Verse and Madame Web had nearly identical budgets. But while the former was a massive hit, earning fan adoration and several prestigious awards, the latter has only made us appreciate Morbius more. Animation could soon become the leading narrative form for superhero stories, as seen with Invincible, which consistently breaks rating records. Inspired by the success of Into the Spider-Verse, Kevin Feige, is considering bringing more animated projects to the big screen. Rumors suggest that alongside other Spider People spin offs, full fledged animated films about iconic franchise villains, like an adult rated Venom project, are in development. This makes sense as Tom Hardy's beloved trilogy concludes, and Venom remains one of Sony's most profitable assets. We're excited about the potential stories that could be told with Venom, as his visual abilities are perfectly suited for animation. However, Sony still needs to finish the Spider-Verse trilogy, which we'll likely see after the premiere of the next film. Share in the comments which Marvel Universe characters you think deserve an animated project and how you feel about this format in general. Now, moving on to Spider-Man 4. Mark Wahlberg recently confirmed in an interview that the Uncharted sequel's script is finished, and filming with Tom Holland might start in the coming months. How does this relate to Spider-Man? Well, after wrapping up Uncharted, Holland went straight into filming No Way Home. So, we might see a similar situation here, as both projects are produced by Sony, making it cost-effective to plan their production back-to-back. -back. Previously, we discussed rumors about creative disagreements among producers. Now, studios are considering introducing a live-action Miles Morales in the fourth film with Holland. If this turns out to be true, here's our vision the studio will focus on finishing the third part of the animated Spider-Verse, and likely release it in the second half of 2024. By then, Holland and the team could complete the Uncharted sequel and iron out all creative issues for Spider-Man 4, which would directly follow the Web Slingers saga. Sony could use the Spider-Verse trilogy to tease the live-action debut of Miles Morales in a post credit scene, presenting two paths forward, introduce the new hero within Spider-Man 4 alongside Holland, acknowledging the character's existence in the MCU, or, less appealingly for us, but potentially more lucrative for Sony, 
replace him in the universe with Venom, Morbius, and Kraven, making him the main Spider-Man of that franchise, while Marvel continues to develop Peter Parker's story within the Avengers world. Sony could then explore a unique version of the friendly neighborhood superhero, potentially setting up a crossover in future multiverse adventures. Now, let's hear from you. Which scenario do you prefer for Miles Morales' development, alongside Peter Parker in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or in his own separate franchise. And touching on animation again, there's interesting news about the Marvel Zombies project. It's confirmed that the main antagonist will be the Scarlet Witch, acting as a sort of Lich King, controlling the undead of the planet with a hive mind intent on decimating humanity's remnants, among whom will be some surviving superheroes. Insiders add that the project will feature an unknown hero in a new guise, Moon Knight and Vampire Hunter Blade. What makes this amusing is that we still don't know when the main universe film will be released. Announced almost five years ago, we suspect Mahershala Ali might be regretting his commitment by now. Recent updates suggest the project could be pushed to 2026, but Ali is reportedly satisfied with the script writing process and more details might emerge soon. For now, we await the premiere of Marvel Zombies in 2025, which promises all the brutality and horror that made the original comic by Robert Kirkman famous. Speaking of Kirkman, in a recent interview, the comic writer and Invincible producer debunked rumors of Spider-Man appearing in the animated series' second season. Legal issues are to blame, as Disney holds the rights to Spider-Man animations, and it's unlikely they'd lend such a valuable asset to direct competitors. The rumors stemmed from Josh Keaton, voice of the spectacular Spider-Man, being listed in the cast and the existence of a comic crossover. We suspect the series might instead introduce a parody character, similar to how The Boys presents its superheroes as analogs to the Justice League, thus avoiding copyright infringement while paying homage to the iconic voice actor. And with that, we wrap up this episode. Share your thoughts in the comments about the controversial updates surrounding Thunderbolts, your views on Marvel's animated future, and any theories you have about the plot of Spider-Man 4.